hi everyone welcome back to my channel so it's been some time since my last video well uh, what can i say i was not doing that good my health was uh, slightly troubled uh, so i kind of took a break for a few weeks uh, just eating sleeping resting that's all i've been doing the whole month i hope that's okay some of you may know the reason behind it and many of you have actually sent me messages, uh, mails, comments, uh, wishing me good health and uh, really kind words. And for that, I am very grateful. And I want to thank all of you for your well wishes because of which it made me feel really good actually to have that kind of concern from you. So thank you. Thank you very much. So I thought why not uh, break this uh, break with an interesting video, a different kind of a video format compared to my usual videos, uh, which is based on an article that I read a couple of weeks back. So this is an article which was published in the website of CERN. Okay, what does it say? LHCB discovers a new type of tetraquark at CERN. The LHCB collaboration has observed an exotic particle made up of four charm quarks for the first time. Now, this is very much related to the series that I was doing on particle physics. So I thought, why not a little bit of a discussion on this particular topic? All right. So, so many things here. What is CERN? Well, CERN is the European Organization for uh, Nuclear Research, which is uh, basically running the largest most powerful particle accelerator in the whole world that is the LHC the Large Hadron Collider so CERN runs the LHC the Large Hadron Collider uh, which is a particle accelerator the largest and the most powerful uh, in the entire world the largest because if as you see the circumference of this tunnel this accelerator is almost 27 kilometers it is situated and near Geneva in Europe and uh, powerful because uh, I think the world record of the highest energetic collision between two subatomic particles is held by LHC so it bombarded two protons and then collided those two protons with an energy of 13 trillion electron volts so 13 trillion electron volts is not some small energy for two subatomic particles which are colliding onto each other. So LHCb is a, a kind of a specialized detector, uh, one among the seven detectors in LHC in which this particular uh, discovery has been made. So what happens in the LHC, just to give you an idea, so the in the LHC you have uh, this tunnel, this accelerator which goes on for 27 kilometers. So high energetic protons or uh, heavier ions are created which are made to go around this particular tunnel at very very high velocities velocities near about the speed of light velocities are greater than 99 percent the speed of light and at these particular velocities the protons or these heavy ions which keep on revolving around the tunnel finally come and meet at a particular point and boom you end up getting a particle collision so this is where two protons meet and boom you end up creating a window for studying physics so at such high energies trillions of electron volts when subatomic particles like protons collide together then it gives you an opportunity to investigate the nature of the elementary particles which make up the proton it gives you a window to investigate the forces which hold these particles together. It gives you an opportunity to investigate the phenomena that take place at such microscopic levels and also ask questions which might give answers as to the origins of our universe itself. Now, coming back to this uh, article, so this is just a little bit of a simulation. Uh, the source of the simulation is certain website, uh, which basically, uh, gives us an idea of what happens in the LHC. So coming back to our article, uh, as we can see here, this article, I will put a link to this particular article in the description. If you want to read it further, you can. 
the LHCB collaboration has observed a type of four quark particle never seen before. The discovery presented at a recent seminar at CERN and described in a paper is likely to be the first of a previously undiscovered class of particles. Particles made up of four quarks are already exotic and the one we have just discovered is the first to be made up of four heavy quarks of the same type, especially two charm quarks and two anti-charm quarks. So the part article goes on uh, about uh, this particular discovery, but because this this uh, article, this discovery is so much related to the series in particle physics that I was doing, I thought it was it would be interesting to talk about it. Now, so much information here, right? Quarks, what are quarks? What are charm quarks? What are tetra quarks? Is it even possible? Uh, so let's just recap a little bit so you know what hadrons are. The large Hadron Collider, LHC, is a particle accelerator which collides hadron particles. So hadrons are subatomic particles which are made up of further elementary particles called quarks. They experience a strong force. You have protons, neutrons, pi mesons, omega particles, uh, lambda, xi, kaon particles, delta particles, on and on. A large diversity of hadron particles exist out there in nature. Some exist in ordinary matter like neutrons and protons. Others can be created in high energetic nuclear reactions. So a hadron is basically made up of what? Quarks. See, hadrons like neutrons and protons are not elementary particles. They are made up of fundamental elementary constituent particles which are known as quarks. So neutron is a hadron made up of up, down, down quarks. The proton is a hadron made up of up, up, down quarks. And the pi meson is also a hadron made up of a down, anti, up quarks. So hadrons can further be classified into two categories, the baryons and the mesons. So what you have here, the neutrons and the protons are actually baryons, while the pi meson is actually a meson particle. So these are two classifications of hadron particles. If you're interested in a little bit of a detailed discussion, you can look up my previous video on quarks. So there are six kinds of quarks, which is known as flavor. You have the up quark, the down quark, the strange quark, the charm quark, which is a heavy, unstable quark, the top quark, and the bottom quark, which are also heavy quarks compared to up and down. So the, these six quarks combine in various ways to create these two class of hadron particles, the three quark combinations known as baryons and the two quark combinations known as meson particles. Now where does the tetra quark come in or the penta quark? Now to understand and to appreciate uh, the idea of a tetra quark or uh, a penta quark for that matter, uh, let me revise a little bit about the uh, quark color hypothesis. So going back, uh, why is it that only three quarks or two quark combinations are coming together to create these hadron particles? Why not four quarks? Why not five? Why not 10? Why not 50 quarks coming together to create a hadron particle? Hmm, now that's an interesting question, right? Is there something which prevents these quarks from coming together. Well, you see quarks are very, very peculiar. They are uh, very interesting in the sense that they have uh, properties which we usually don't see in our macroscopic world. One such property is the color property. So quarks supposedly have this particular property uh, that does not ha necessarily have an analog in the classical world because of which we have given it the name of color. We call it the color property or the color charge based on which quarks come together. So let me give you an example. Uh, in electromagnetism, you have a positive charge and negative charge. And when positive and negative charge come together, you create an electrically neutral hole. But in quarks, when quarks come together to create composite particles, then they come together based on color charge. Now in electromagnetism you have positive and negative charge but in quarks you have uh, six different kinds of color charges. Now we have given them the name of 
red green blue anti red anti green anti blue so red green blue is a quantum property which is associated with quarks and the anti red anti green anti blue is a quantum property associated with the anti quarks so what does that have to do with color you see as i said quarks have properties that we don't see manifesting in ordinary macroscopic world because of this reason it is very difficult for us to visualize many of the things actually when you study atomic physics when you study quantum physics when you study physics at this small microscopic level there are so many interesting properties that it is very difficult sometimes to visualize to think how can this happen because a similar thing is not happening in the classical world our brains our ideas our visualization capacities is based upon the world that we see around us which is the macroscopic world and there are many things that happen in the quantum world which does not exactly have an analog in the macroscopic world hence it becomes a little bit difficult for it to understand that's why we take the help of analogies we create analogies just for us as a kind of a convenience in understanding so it has nothing to do with color that's what i'm saying the property has nothing to do with color in the way we perceive it colors red green blue it has nothing to do with visual color it is just a mere representation in the sense that only one thing is relevant here what happens with colors you have red color blue color green color uh, when these primary colors come together what you get you get white right you get white color when these primary colors come together and that is what's important here these color charges or these color quantum properties when they come together they create a white or a colorless or a chargeless composite hadron particle how so if you see you have two particles here one a three quark combination particles another is a quark anti quark combination particles and you have here let's suppose a quark that has a green color charge another one that has a red color charge another that one has a blue color charge so when the properties of green red and blue come together it ends up creating what you can say as white or colorless colorless in the sense that at this composite particle does not have color charge so it does not interact with other particles having this kind of a color charge property and also in the case of a meson so we, we have a color here let's suppose red and you have an anti color here maybe anti red uh, for a quark anti quark particle this also creates the hadron which can be thought of as a colorless hadron particle colorless in the sense that they do not have this color charge so when these three properties red green and blue come together they create this kind of a colorless uh, hadron particle and when a color and an anti color come together they create this kind of a colorless hadron particle that do not experience the color charge so when quarks come together they follow this specific rule so this gives us an idea about the kind of hadron particles that are actually possible so for example if you have uh, some kind of uh, had hypothetical particle having red color and blue color then this kind of a particle is not possible why because this is not this composite particle is not colorless in that sense that it does not follow the rule uh, of color hypothesis in the same way if you have some kind of a four quark combination all right red green and blue plus another quark having green again this combination is not colorless according to this particular rule and hence they are not possible so color hypothesis tells us that all hadrons that exist in nature and all hadrons that are possible will follow this particular rule in which quarks will come together to create those composite particles in such a manner that their color charge ends up creating a colorless composite particle all right so these particles the double quark combination and the four quark combination is not possible because it violates that which brings me back to the article that we were discussing so it says here the particles made up of four quarks are already exotic and the one we have discovered is the first to be made up of four heavy quarks of the same type especially two charm quarks and two charm anti quarks you see the first confusion that 
you may have when you hear tetra quark is that it is made up of four quarks so it is not essentially four quarks but rather two quarks and two anti quarks uh, which explains why it can be formed because when you have a four two quark to anti quark combinations you, you can have uh, red you can have anti red you can have blue you can have anti blue so in that sense uh, it's basically colorless again because the red and the anti red cancel each other out the blue and the anti blue cancel each other out so you end up getting this kind of a particle which is in fact colorless and therefore it should be possible in fact these kind of tetra quarks and also penta quarks and further quarks were hypothesized a long time back and scientists have been making investigations to find out uh, their existence uh, for a long time actually and this is probably the first time a uh, few of the first times in which uh, mm, such a particle has actually been discovered so coming back to the article particles made up of four quarks are already exotic and the one we have just discovered is the first to be made up of four quarks of the same type so it's a charm quark two charm and two anti charm quarks so these are so this is a charm this is the anti charm quark this charm and the ch anti charm quark coming together to create a composite particle as with previous tetra quark discoveries it is not completely clear whether the new particle is a true tetra quark that is a system of four quarks tightly bound together or a pair of two quark particles weakly bound in a molecule like structure so this is what's important because uh, in LHC this is not the particle which is actually detected but rather when this particle decays further those particles which decay they were detected and it was hypothesized that their decays happened from the original tetra quark. So it is also possible that maybe instead of uh, one composite particle you end up actually having two composite particles lightly bound together to each other in the form of a molecule that is also a possibility actually. So either way, the new tetra quark will help theorists test models of quantum chromodynamics, the theory of strong interaction. So that is what the article is about. In fact, our progress regarding tetra quarks, penta quarks has been going on since quite some time. In fact, last year there was another article, again related to LHCb. So LHCb experiment discovers a new penta quark. It was in 2019. The LHCb collaboration has observed a new penta quark particle and has confirmed the penta quark structure previously reported. The particle name PC decays to a proton and a J psi particle composed of a charm quark and an anti charm quark. So it's quite interesting. You see, these uh, hadron particles that we usually study are mostly baryons consisting of three quarks and mesons consisting of a quark anti quark pair. But now, because of uh, LHCb experiments, we are uh, finding out that there is a possibility of these bigger uh, composite particles composed of a two quark anti quark pair, which is the tetra quark, and the penta quark is obviously going to be uh, you're going to have uh, three quarks and another quark anti quark pair so maybe uh, so if you look at the color hypothesis it's possible that uh, uh, this uh, in this case you have the uh, red the blue and the green and in this case you have the red and the anti red all right so that way the color hypothesis is also satisfied in this case because this is a colorless particle anyways it's quite interesting that uh, these kind of developments are happening tetra quarks Penta quarks, and who knows, uh, maybe uh, even more bigger composite hadron particles could be created in future. So that is all for today. I have made a little bit of a different format video. If you are interested, if you like this video, if you enjoyed this video and you are interested in further videos where I talk about recent developments in the scientific world like this, then please tell me. I would really love your feedback. That is for today. And I hope you guys are doing well because I am good. Thank you very much. See you next time.